Okay, so welcome to my sketchbook flip through tour. Um, this sketchbook I completed uh, from January 2019 to mid 2020, so it's pretty recent. Um, it's a moleskin A4, uh, I think it's like a sketchbook portfolio thing, um, and these stickers were stickers I created during that year. Okay, so. So first page, these were just pen tests. Um, can't remember. I think these were like stationary sketches that I was trying to do, like a weekly calendar and a memo pad and some book plate designs. Um, I think these girls were referenced, but I can't remember. Uh, this one was definitely referenced. I think it says it's a William Flint study. Okay, what else? Um, she was part of a 2019 10-year challenge where I had to draw something from 2009. Um, and I guess, I think she was like a Gaia Online character that I redrew. Just some other like concepts and studies. Okay, this page I still really like because of this girl because I really still like her facial features and the sort of proportions of her face. I think I did that one really nicely and I like how her hair sort of radiates from a sort of um, like a darker tinge to a lighter tinge at the bottom. That's really nice to me. Everything else was sort of stud like attempts, I guess. This was like in gold ink. You might notice just from now like I'm not a mad uh, user of like colors. I sort of know that I like pencil, lead work, and ink. So that's pretty much what this sketchbook has. This was like a concept for some fairy, I guess, but I think it was also a bit of a study. Okay, this one was a Leighton study. Um, and I really like how he does his profiles. Just They just have such strong chins. And this one I remember spending quite a bit of time on because I was sort of stressed or something and I just really wanted to spend a lot of time on her hair and making all the renderings um, sort of like really sort of sh crisp and sort of sharp I guess in the hair. That was my main focus and everything else just sort of um, just sort of went off that. I actually still really like how, her, how the ribbons um, sort of catch onto her hair and how this sort of goes on top and sort of swirls around in the back bun. Okay, what else? This one... Can't really remember much. Okay, these were some like inking tests. These ones were both costume references using um, this pen. Which is just like a Uniball Signo 0.5. I don't know, I really like this pen because it's just like really sleek. I don't know if it's going to show up. Is it going to show up? That's okay, I'll link it. I'll link it somewhere. Okay, I remember this one. So I saw a picture of seals underwater in like going through kelp and the way that their bodies were sort of um, uh, in perspective and the way that they were sort of lifting themselves up. I actually really liked the way that the seals were doing that so I figured why not I try that on mermaids. So these were sort of, in, these three mermaids were inspired by seals. I still like this one. I like, I like how her chin is below um, her neck and it like her body's got, got curving up from behind her. Yeah. I think these were more studies. This one was wasn't referenced. I'm not mad keen on it. Okay. I still really like the rendering of this one. I think the dark outlines really suit her in a very like mucheresque way. I think I named her Blanche. And then this one was a reference for Mucha, which was um I can't remember which one. Um 
but it had like lilies all around her. These are just some sketches. Just more unfinished. I think this we start at, um, what, is, what do you call it, Mermaid from like the six. So I didn't really, I think at that year I was doing the Finders Keepers Market. So that was on from like the second to like 5th of May, so I couldn't really do any mermaid um, until the 6th, so that was my first one. Next one. There's more mermaid. Oh, if you don't know what mermaid is, it's when you draw a mermaid picture for every day in the month of May. I used to do it quite often. Okay, just some more sketches. Um, this one I never really completed. I still have like that rock face and the final tail to go. Um, not sure, I guess I, when I spend too long on a piece, I sort of, I don't know, like get, not interested in any get not get interested in it anymore so i sort of just left it like i still like the rendering is it's very much nearly finished but i guess the clouds were sort of a bit too much and a bit too um like it was okay but just not like exciting enough for me to continue it which is the whole piece wasn't wasn't getting there for me so more mermaid i think a torso is too long in this one This is probably the only bits of colour you'll see in the entire sketchbook. Okay, I think here you start to see the beginnings of my Secret Garden mini card sketches when I was trying to think of different themes and um, ideas for like the card back or front I think it was. So I was just writing down every word that I could think of that was related to the garden um, and related to like flowers and sort of secret gardening stuff. Um, what else? I think these are just like to buy lists and different sort of um, sketch title ideas. I actually still really like these. I might do something with it. So this was the first star catcher I drew. Looks like I drew it in like mid-June 2019. Um, I remember, I think it must have been on a weekend, I had an idea for the Starcatcher and I just spent the entire time on it, as in like I, I normally sort of break down my drawings to do maybe sketch one day, finish off the next, but I just like sat down and just finished it, so that was the first. Some more studies. And I was trying to do some calligraphy for um, a book plate that I got commissioned by. I didn't like this at all, but I like this. That was a study as well. Most of these, you can probably notice most of the things I do are studies. Um, and like he wanted a, like a willow tree, so I drew that. I hate the font. Like he, I ended up just covering that up digitally, but I do, I do like how the shading of this turned out for the willow tree. Some more sketches. I don't know what I cut out and I'm a bit, I'm a bit disturbed that I cut something out of this small skin sketchbook. And anyways. Okay, so now we get into when I went to um, like overseas in London for two months of 2019. This one um, was the back, this was the sketch for the back of the card Secret Garden and I was just like writing down the different colorways that I wanted to use, like I definitely wanted like purple, pinks and greens and whites so I made sure that it was all sort of um, kind of there. This one was sort of an Art Nouveau-y um, rose design. Okay, so for this sketch I remember doing like a life drawing session at Leighton House Museum which is one of my favorite house museums in London and what they had was a guided 
um, art instructor come in. So you do life drawing and then she'd come around to you and spend maybe like a minute or two just like um, suggesting ways that you could improve your drawing and all that. And she seemed to really like mine, which was great. Um, I think she liked like the flow of it, um, which was nice. But she did mention something to me. She did say that these lines do not exist. Now, I'm entirely self-taught, so I've never had an art instructor like tell me what to do or um, I've sort of just like figured it out along the way. But to have someone tell you um, what you could improve on, that was like mind-blowing to me. So when she said that, that the lines do not exist, she was essentially telling me that maybe you should try using more um, like mass. When I say mass drawing, I mean more like shape-based drawings, like what a painter would use rather than what a drawer would use. So that's more... Um, like focusing on the shadow aspect of it rather than the line work itself. I don't know if that made any sense, but I tried it. I tried it on the next one where I used like like a brushy, what did I do? I used this. I don't know if this is going to show up anymore, but maybe if I do this thing. Nope. Does not show. Anyways, it's a Pentel um, brush pen. And it's refillable as well, which is why I like it. So I was just using it on the side and like really making really quick strokes. I think at one point it was like running out. So that's why I got like this sort of texture. So I did try and focus more on the shapes of it rather than... So like the shadows of her, of like the v-neck line instead of trying to just draw it in in pen. Or like the shadows um, crossing her feet and, the, and her dress. Um... So I did try that. These were just some sketches of faces. These are some poses. Um, I think I just went online and searched up like a random pose um, timed thing. So we start to get to Inktober. Um, this one was I still really enjoy. This was a study from Margaret Ellie Webb, one of her paint, um, one of her drawings. Um, and I really like how sort of thick her line work was and how like layered her piece was. So it feels um, immediate, but there's so much going on still in such a in such a small area. This one was I named um, Starcatcher in Training. So you can see like little star stars in the grass and stars in her hair, and she's like she's got stars everywhere. She doesn't really know where to put them. Um, I think this one I was using like a new brush I got, so this was like a miniature. It's not going to show up. No. Why does it not show up? Oh, anyways. So this was just like a tiny miniature brush. Um, this one was another Margaret Ellie Webb study. Um, again, I like how immediate her pieces are, so you've got like the figure and a very small background that still shows you that she's like outside of a castle moat pond area. Um, I love how her dress was this textural, um, I don't know, like rendered piece. I just, I just really wanted to know how she did that. This one was an original piece I called Harvest Moon. So she's like harvesting stars that were like in the grass there. This is like a different girl, I guess, and then she's sort of carrying it with her against this moon. I think I, I used like an ice cream like tub, like a small single serving tub for this or some sort of dessert one to make that moon. Um, and they all have, they're all sort of cropped off because when I was in London, I didn't have a scanner with me. So I couldn't just, I couldn't scan it um, and then post it on Instagram or something. So I use this app called Cam Scanner. And what it does is that, um, it takes the corners, like it's usually used for documents, so it takes the corners of your page and then sort of warps it so it's flat um, and then it does like a really high contrast filter on it where it takes out the white paper um, and just leaves you the black text. So that was really, so what I used it for, instead of cropping it to the entire page, I made it crop to like this part, so I made sure that at least these were all square, like squared up and teed up. Um, and then it would just crop to that and then it will flatten it out and I'll and all the blacks would show through, and it was just very, very useful when um, when I didn't have a scanner. See, so this was another original work. What did I call it? I called it Milky Way. 
and I really liked what someone said of it. Um, they said that it was a very subtle but dynamic piece, and that's exactly what I wanted. So you got like stars sort of in that Milky Way, and she's sort of just catching them in a little bag, and there's like a little moon, um, like sort of clasping her dress. Um, this one was kind of like a half study, half Van Gogh piece sort of inspired thing. I think when I showed my brother, he mentioned that um, it was very poetic, and I, I love that comment too. So you can see some of my initial sketches here and some like pen test. This one, what did I call this one? Uh, I can't remember. Anyways. Oh no, I called it Supernova. I think I used this pen for it. Because it wasn't, it, I didn't use my normal, um, like, uh, pen, pen and ink and nib. So I just wanted to use just this pen. Okay. This one was a very quick little sketch. I called her North Star. So she's got like little stars in her hair and like a crescent moon earring. People really like this one, so I even turned it into a sticker. This one I called um, Lunar Eclipse. So it just made up a story between like two people, but it was also very much a study of a, of a piece. I can't remember who it was by now. Like I have it in my Instagram somewhere. You can see all my like studies and trying to figure out how to how to shade metal. So like which way was it gonna shade? Was it gonna shade down the armor or was it gonna shade across the armor? And I think I think across worked really well, so I ended up just like um sort of doing it on the final piece. Like you can see when you have like a rim lighting on your metal and then you have like a highlight, really stark highlight, that sort of um, makes it seem a bit more rendered in metal. I think this day I went to the National um, National Gallery in London and I saw so many works with bunnies in it, in like tapestries, um, in like, uh, I can't remember too much, but I remember there was like a, a pretty large bunny day, so I ended up just drawing bunnies. What's this one? Uh, this one I called Starlight and Star Bright, or the Coronation, so this girl is and um, sort of giving like a star crown tiara thing to this other one. Um, I remember the pose was based off a mucha, like a cigarette packet or something, something that he had um, he'd drawn to advertise. Okay, this one was an entirely original piece. Um, I really wanted to use um, Orion's belt. Even though Orion was like a male character, I figured if I could warp the story to to be like Orion giving this star catcher a gift of like his belt. So the belt is consists of like three stars. Um, so that's her sort of like embracing it. Um, and this was like I didn't want to I didn't want to fill the whole piece up with black just because that would have used a lot of ink. So I only just did it that much, and then digitally I. I added in like the rest of the black, but I'm really liking the, the texture that comes about from there. And I like how sort of soft and sort of sleepy it, it kind of kind of is. I remember I was trying to do a bunch of like a dynamic poses, but they all just didn't feel right until I got to this one, um, this tiny little piece here. Yeah, I had her like jumping and sort of doing all sorts of stuff, but I wasn't feeling it. Some studies of eyes. Just more sketching. I didn't really like her face all that much, so I ended up redoing it digitally. This one. Yeah. I think I called her Evening Star. Some more sketches. I remember when I was on. Um, on the tube I saw this girl with like a black headband and the way that her hair sort of fell 
um, over it was really pretty. So I, I like I tried to set that in my memory so I could draw it again when I was back home. And I ended up using it in like a different piece, but that was that was sort of like engraved in my memory. Some more bunnies. This was a sketch for something that never really eventuated. More sketches. Okay, so we're getting into 2020. Okay, so I spent ages on this. I spent weekends because I was working full time still and I only had really the weekend to work on drawings. This piece was a study by Robert Anning Bell and I sort of figured I'm just going to do it. I'm going to try it anyways because it was so out of my um, skill set to do all of this like pen stuff but it took, I don't know, maybe 20 plus hours it must have taken me. So I was using a whole bunch of different pens and brushes to try and get the effects and I still love some areas like I love how like I don't know how not maybe violent this looks but just how dynamic and like the different textures you can get like this was all like hatching here this was all kind of swirls upon themselves there and like there's bubbles now I really enjoy doing this I like I learned a lot I love how oh god I can keep going but like just the the blackness of the central area Ah, oh, so good. I can't remember what this was. I think I was just testing something. I wasn't too sure about this. I did put this on my Instagram, but then I sort of archived it because I looked at it the next day. And it's not often I feel like I hate a drawing, but I think I just did not like her face. I didn't like the right angles. You'll notice in my work, I actually try and not use right angles at all because I feel like it just stiffens a pose when it could be softer so it wasn't yeah it wasn't mad keen I like the roses behind her but I think it's a bit like meh these were some like dress studies ah oh, this one I'm a bit sad about I sort of wish I finished this but I was wanting to do a tapestry of like you know, the sort of medieval um, like tiny little flowers that sort of went everywhere and I had like three bunnies sort of intertwined in that there was going to be like a sort of banner shape where I would have like tassels at the end or something and it would be on a rod um but yeah that didn't really go anywhere this is some more Margaret Ellie Webb stud studies like outlining in like a dark like thick pen really sort of helped um make it stand out of the page so these were some these were two book plate designs I ended up shortening this one a little bit digitally like I cut off this part of the dress and I removed that part but everything else um, stayed the same this one yeah I think I had like ex libri and then shelf row um, and then date acquired and this one was a uh, Desdemona um, study like there was a painting from like a, a scene from Othello some more pose studies pose and clothing I think okay so I, I still love Margaret Ellie Webb and just the way she uses um, really like like truly black and white starkly contrasted stylized plants and how she arranges them um, I still really want to like just go hard on how learning how she's she's done it just because it's so I love it so much I, I love the way she stylizes it some more sketches okay so this one was a piece that I called constellations um, uh, it doesn't make sense on its own here but I did a lot of studies in like another secondary sketchbook I have which I use more for just like because it's like a cheaper version it's like something that you can buy at the news agency so I sort of use that sketchbook more for like studies and quick things so when I finalize an idea I put it into my moleskin sketchbook um, so this is like two star catchers um, making constellations basically 
And in the final one, I have it in like a triangle composition um, with like a background and like this moon sort of cut out as well. But that was all done digitally. I think I also, I found out, I found her head to be like too long and even this one too, I sort of on Photoshop, I pushed it back in a little bit with like the liquify tool. Um, same with this one, I kind of pushed it down. Some more sketches. More sketches. This one I called the Convergence of Stars. So again, I did the same thing I did in this one in where I did a lot of my sketches in like a secondary sketchbook and then put the final in here and then I scan and digitize it and like add the background and like I think I had like a like a frame for this one like a little lower frame on the side um, so I even I redid her head as well because it was just way too small here and I was already too far to try and just like fix it on the on the page so yeah I did that I redid her head digitally This was supposed to be a book plate, but I just straight up did not like how her chest area was looking or her face was looking. And I tried it again, but I still couldn't really feel it. And yeah, we're getting to the end. So this was some studies of girls on Pinterest. This was paint tests. Yeah. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that. This sketchbook is like I have, um, what do you call it? I've scanned every page and I've, it's available as a PDF download for free on my website. So you can get like 300 DPI scans of like all the pages if you want to see it in more detail, if you want to like read any of the text that I have or to see how um, I've rendered anything, that's all there for free. Yeah, okay. Thank you.